Introduction Metabolism, Part 3, ATP. Now in our first video on metabolism, we talked about metabolism being the ability to build and break down molecules in order to convert energy in a controlled manner. We said if the body were an engine and it would be burning fuel, that we need to be careful that we burn the fuel in a controlled way. We certainly wouldn't want to release all the energy at one time. Now, in a cell, that fuel, the gasoline that we burn, is glucose. And this glucose molecule has a lot of energy in it, especially in these carbon to carbon bonds that we see here. And when we burn glucose, we also don't want to get all the energy out at one time. It would be too much to handle. We need to release the energy in small enough packages, or at least put it into small enough packages that we can spin little bits at a time. And that package that we store the energy in, or that we convert and move the energy into, is a molecule called ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. ATP is our cellular currency. It's spendable energy. ATP is a molecule composed of adenine, which is a, a nitrogen base. It's a, it's a double ring nitrogen base, so it's a purine, attached to a ribose sugar, which is a five-sided sugar, with three phosphate groups on the end. This is our energy carrying molecule and the energy is stored in these bonds of these phosphate groups out here. So one analogy that I like to use is that if glucose is our fuel, it's what we're going to burn for energy, uh, it's kind of like getting your paycheck. When you get your paycheck, you don't go to the grocery store and spend your paycheck. You need to take it to the bank and cash it. Well ATP is our cash. We uh, cash in our glucose to get a bunch of ATPs and the ATP is the currency energy in the cell. In other words, we can say that some uh, energy expensive activity in the cell requires X number of ATP to complete. So how do we spend ATP? How is ATP an energy carrying molecule? Well, let's look at this diagram. Here we have ATP. Oops, let's uh, get back to the beginning here. Uh, now we have ATP. In this last bond, we have a high energy bond. And when we break that bond through hydrolysis, we release energy, and that energy can be used to drive an endergonic reaction. So watch this again. There's our ATP. We break the last phosphate off, and we release energy, and that energy can drive a reaction. So here's the equation. ATP uh, breaks apart into ADP, adenosine diphosphate, plus a phosphate group, and we release energy. We can see in the diagram that the energy is stored in this last bond. So this energy that we see here was inside of the ATP molecule. But then the question is, how did the energy get into ATP? Well, we have to turn this reaction around. Energy is used to attach a phosphate to an adenosine diphosphate in order to make ATP. Later, that phosphate can be released and free up that energy again to be used by a cell. So again, we can flip this reaction around. Oops. That's not difficult to read. Let's try it like this. Here we see both reactions are reversible. It's the same reaction, just looking at it uh, forward or, or reverse. Let's look at it in a little bit different way. Let's look at this diagram. Here we have ADP plus a phosphate group. To tie these together, we need an inner input of energy. And then we make ATP. Then ATP can be used for cellular work or chemical synthesis. And to get the energy back out, we break apart uh, that last bond between the last phosphate groups and we release the energy. We can think of this in, in a way uh, like a rechargeable battery where the ATP is the battery that's charged up and we could put the battery into like a radio or a flashlight and the energy is taken out to uh, run that machine and then when the battery is run down, the run down battery is the ADP plus P. We can call this the ATP ADP plus P cycle. One question you might have is, how do we do this part over here? How do we get this energy in? Uh, wh where is it coming from? Um, we says here from sunlight or from food, and we're going to focus on food. How do we get the energy out of food, say glucose, which is we talked about being our, our cellular fuel? How do we get the energy from glucose, our fuel, into uh, or available, make it available to get it into the ATP. Another question we have is how did we get the energy into glucose in the first place? In fact, let's ask that question first. We have two questions. 
how do we get energy into glucose? And why is glucose such an, an energy rich molecule? And then how do we get the energy out of glucose and into ATP? Well, the answer to the first question is through photosynthesis. And the answer to the second question is through fermentation and respiration. And this is where our next series of videos is going. We'll have a video series on photosynthesis and a video series on fermentation and a video series on respiration. So check back soon for those.